Some good pie. Today's video isn't an internet video about an internet video. Instead, it's an internet video about a specific scene in a specific movie. You're probably thinking, wow, why are you doing that, you jackass? You're supposed to talk about internet stuff, internet culture. I don't know where that accent came from. So am I going to talk about like a critically acclaimed scene like Tears in the Rain or the coin flip scene? No, I'm going to be talking about one of the most infamous scenes to come out in a while from a movie called A Ghost Story. The film just came out this summer in 2017 and it's generally been well received by most top critics and YouTube reviewers. However, the one scene in the movie that everyone isn't decisive about is the pie eating scene. Which is something that kind of baffles me. If this film is being widely well received, what seems to be the problem with this scene in particular? Well, it's infamous really for one reason. It's length. It's like four and a half, five minutes long. And it's just Rooney Mara eating a, a pie. That's it. That's all it is. Not only will I analyze the scene, I'll be talking about why it's so integral to the overall quality of the movie, and potentially trying to win over some opposition. Oh, some good-ass pie. The scene itself is easily understandable and doesn't really need much explaining. However, I feel it's the most subtextually dense scene in the whole film. Not only within the diegesis of the film, but as a callback to a filmmaking luminary that has influenced every contemporary filmmaker today. First, let's talk about the scene's importance to the film. Rooney Mara's character has just lost her lover husband in a fatal car crash, which is Casey Affleck's character, and is starting the grieving process. Now, that's the key word here, grief. There are many ways of conveying grief as a feeling to an audience through film. This is usually shown through key dialogue choices and the acting prowess and mannerisms, if it can be conveyed properly. However, director David Lowry takes an alternative route and lets the visuals do all the talking. Lowry wanted to convey grief by giving it to the audience firsthand. This is what David Lowry has to say on this. I wanted a representation of grief that we haven't seen before that felt unique and uncomfortable and profound. The long runtime for this scene is very deliberate, because it doesn't sugarcoat or romanticize grief and loss like many films might do. This idea is a callback to the late great Tarkovsky and his filmmaking philosophies. If you watch films like Stalker, The Mirror, Solaris, Nostalgia, you know that he uses long shots rather than cuts and montage editing. In his memoir, Sculpting in Time, he states, the distinctive time running through the shots makes the rhythm of the picture, and rhythm is determined not by the length of the edited pieces, but by the pressure of the time that runs through them. Editing cannot determine rhythm. In this respect, it can only be a feature of style. Indeed, time courses through the picture despite editing rather than because of it. The course of time, recorded in the frame, is what the director has to catch in the pieces laid out on the editing table. Applying the cinematic philosophy to a ghost story, we see that the emotion of the scene is not conveyed by manipulation of events in the film by editing, but by how Lowry allows the visuals to sit in our subconscious. It's easy to convey a feeling in film by a certain amount of visual and audio editing, but to invoke emotions through one visceral image can be considered poetry. This may be extremely hard to do, because you have to establish a mood and an idea quickly. Rooney Mara's character goes from slowly eating the pie to shoving it down her gluttonous face hole at the speed of light. Nom, 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 nom. Symbolically, Mara Rooney's character is trying to fill a hole within herself artificially. She eats the pie to fill this hole. She doesn't want to deal with the natural healing that comes from the passage of time. Consequentially, she ends up throwing up at the end of the scene conveying that this is an unnatural form of self-help. The length of the scene helps substantiate the symbolic meaning. It takes time to heal from something like the death of a husband or lover. It really isn't something that is romanticized or glorified like in most films. It doesn't happen that way. It's a painful process that is shown with intense realism and brutal honesty. Time is an integral part of the film story and overall themes, and Lowry wanted to also incorporate this cinematic meditation that we often don't see anymore. This is what David Lowry has to say on this. I find long scenes like that uh, both peaceful and meditative, but also uncomfortable. And I wanted to find the balance between those, those, those means. I wanted the audience to feel as if they were seeing something they shouldn't be seeing. And I wanted the, the length of time at which they had to you know, spend in these private moments to be you know, discomforting. There's a great deal of you know, 
uh, well, the movie in a whole, as a whole is very much about the passage of time. And I wanted, it, for those sequences in the movie, I wanted the passage of time to be very palpable and for audiences to be very aware of it and to perhaps push back against it. You know, when you're sitting there for that long looking at one thing, and even if that thing is changing, there's a lot going on in that shot. Rooney's doing a lot as an actress, but nonetheless, we aren't used to seeing something for such a sustained length of time and, and it starts to feel repetitive or redundant and you wonder why you're watching this and yet it keeps going on and it keeps going on and eventually it breaks you down, hopefully. Either it breaks you down or you leave the movie, but, but it breaks you down and you start to understand time in a different way and in a way those scenes are teaching the audience how to watch the movie. Expectations of this film are very different. The poster makes it seem like a low budget horror film and the setup is kind of like a horror film especially the first night scene about 10 minutes in. However, I don't think it's just that, seeing as people would probably find this scene pretentious and long for no reason. Which, if you aren't convinced after this video, I can't help you anymore. It's just a matter of what tasted films you have. But I think it's extremely unfair to dismiss the scene as pretentious and useless. The film already sets you up for a scene like this. There were a bit of long shots already up to this point so the style was already put in place. I think if the scene wasn't in the film, it would have been just mediocre and probably wouldn't have been the center of a lot of discourse. The scene is lingering not just for the sake of the narrative, but for the audience to engage with it, positively or negatively otherwise. And that was my analysis of the pie eating scene. I'm still eating this great pie. Shout out to Gracie's Goods! It's my, it's my aunt. It's, I'm blue shades. This floor is friggin' dirty, I think. I don't know. I'm gonna eat you pie for a few minutes. Also, I don't know if I'm gonna put this in. Uh, the whole idea of doing the scene, or like doing the analysis, like live action parts, trying to replicate the scene, is from uh, The Pervert's Guide to Cinema by Slavoj Sizek, or his other film, The Pervert's Guide to Ideology. And he does it in this fantastic way where he replicates the set the, the scene is taking place on, so like, the the fight scene between um, Nada and whatever, I forget his friend's name, and they live, they, um, he is by the dumpster, and that's when he says the famous, like, line that people quote, like, I am eating from the trash can that is ideology. I should end this video. I, yeah, I should end this video. I'll see you guys later.